We are an all-volunteer search and rescue team. We're the oldest volunteer uh, search and rescue team in the state of Indiana. We've been around since 1990. Uh, our focus is to help families in time of crisis, finding missed or lost people. We also have different disciplines within the search and rescue organization. One of the things that we do is we work very closely with the emergency management. We're completely free to these disciplines in the time that they have a crisis. They can call us up and we will deploy to their location, no charge, um, and assist them in any manner we, we can. Uh, it takes dedication, it takes a commitment to your community, it takes the ab ability to work within a group. We train approximately 40 to 50 hours a month. One of our requirements is to become uh, what would, is referred to as a National Search and Rescue Technician 2. And what this allows us to do is in the event that we are deployed and there's other individuals at that catastrophe that are also NASAR Technician 2, we know that we've worked and have trained in the same manner which allows us to become team members and that we can effortlessly fit right into that team member. The other thing with, with our team is that we want to ensure that law enforcement knows that if they call the Midwest Search Dogs, they know that we're going to be there for them. Uh, they can expect us to be a, a, a professional team and that they know that uh, they can give us tasks and that we will accomplish those tasks to the best of our ability uh, regardless of the situation. And we need to be the solution and not the problem. That is just amazing. Thanks, mm -hmm. you guys, so much for being here, Niall and David. And tell us who we have here. Who's our furry friend? This is the all-star uh, uh, Bertie, uh, Bertie, German wi uh, wired hair. Okay. He's a trailing dog, two years old, mm -hmm. still in training. Yes. Um, what we start with, the difference on a trailing dog, is it's a very scent specific. This mm -hmm. is the old Lassie movies, you know, smell the article. Yeah. And then and follow the scent that that person actually walks. Uh, directly follows that scent mm -hmm. uh, until they until they find him. Gets to the end. A little amazing fact about Bertie is uh, Bertie has already walked the seven-day-old trail. What we've done is we walked the trail on a Tuesday. We went back to the same spot the following Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Put the same person back at the end of the trail. Uh, had Bertie started again <coughs> and did a seven-day-old trail. That's amazing. Uh, amazing, amazing dog. And what sort of personalities are you looking for with search and rescue dogs? Uh, some of it is is actually by the size of the dog. Mm -hmm. Forty to pound, forty pounds to about eighty pounds is is really the ideal weight. Much heavier, they just don't last in the woods. Much okay. smaller makes it a little difficult getting over the trees and and, and the limbs. Right. Uh, the other thing is is a high play drive and a high prey drive. Mm -hmm. Difference is play drive. Throw a frisbee, dog goes, gets it, brings it back. Do that all day. <laughs> high. <laughs> high barking dog. High, <laughs> <laughs> This ag active dog. Yeah. Uh, that's, that was Condor. We'll, we'll, enter, we'll meet okay. him in a little bit. Good. Uh, the prey drive, the difference between play drive and prey drive is if you take that Frisbee, you put it in a place that may be a little difficult for the dog to get, what will the dog do? Right. Will the dog look up and say, I don't think it's worth the effort? <laughs> or will that dog do whatever it needs to do to figure it out to get to, to that, that item to find? A very persistent A very persistent dog, yes. And how long of training do you put a lot of these dogs through? On average, it takes up to two years of, of training from the time we mm. start to the time that we get them certified okay. to deploy into the field, uh, up, al almost two, two years long. Amazing. And you have a, another dog that's going to do an amazing feat for us, right? We do. We have what we call Super Cooper. Super Cooper! Senior citizens of the team. Okay, excellent. 11-year-old golden retriever. Okay, fantastic. Here she comes. Here he comes. 11 year old? 11 year old. He is, uh, again, uh, and I've already talked to you know, about two years <laughs> it takes to, to train him. Uh -huh. On average, they, 10 to 11 years old is about as long as they will work to train. Okay. Just like people. They just start losing a little bit of interest, start slowing down just a little bit. Uh, but again, this is Super Cooper, and we normally have a big S on his chest. <laughs> He's an evidence recovery dog. Uh, well, that would be police officers, they, they get called to a bank robbery. Uh, they start chasing the individual. They knew that the individual had a weapon. Okay. Uh, they're, they're chasing him. Individual throws the weapon out of the window, but police officers may not stop. They may try to identify where the, in the vicinity that the weapon was found mm -hmm. was thrown, but they w wouldn't stop. They're going to continue to proceed. Okay. What they could then do is call us up. We would bring in Cooper. We would be given a, an area, maybe a block, put Cooper to work. Cooper is able to, based on the scent of the, this by handling the item. Right. Uh, he will find the, the, the item that has the most human scent on it. So he, he'll put his nose wow. down. He'll then would locate the, the weapon. 
he held the ID on it, uh -huh. and then let us know that he's found it. Well, we have hidden a bracelet of mine that Super Cooper is going to find for us, right? I'm sure he will. Okay, what, what do we need to do to prep him? Anything? Uh, this is Chelsea, the handler. Okay. What, what he'll, <laughs> every dog has a, a specific drive. I, I talked about the play drive. They can also have a food drive. Okay. They, it, they just do it f f for whatever that item is. Cooper's going to okay. do it for food. As you see, she's holding yeah. some treats. Okay. Put your vest on him. Yeah. She'll talk to him a little bit, get him ready, let him know that it's time to go to work. Okay. She'll send him to work. Okay. Does he need to, like, know what I smell like? Or? Nope. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> just check it. Yeah. Okay. Nope. It's, it's just simply the, the, mm -hmm. the human scent. Okay. The human scent. And, all right. And it, all human Every, every person's human scent is different, but there's commonalities between all human scent. So what he is doing is simply searching for anything with a human scent on okay. it. Okay. All right, let's see. And I've already asked you that it, it's not expensive. It's not expensive, and if but we get a little, little slobber on it. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> We're I'm okay. used to that. <laughs> and, and as you, you'll see, is Chelsea simply working the dog. Yeah. What we look for when the, when the dogs are working are, are, are subtle movements, uh, raising of the, the ears, uh -huh. body movements, tails stiffen up and act different. Oh. Oh. And, and, and what he'll do, depending on, on the item. Oh, there. He yes. placed it. Found it. Very good. Very excellent. Good. Excellent. So thank you so much. You're and um, we've got some, we were out on the field with you guys to watch some training video, and we're going to go to that right now. Uh, this is the Human Remains Discipline. And what they've done is we've identified an area to search, and we've, we've set out some uh, human remains uh, items that we use for training items. Connie will allow the dog to work that area. And what we're looking for within the dog is subtle head turns, body turns, perkings of the ears, which will indicate to the handler when she believes that the dog is catching scent. And as you see here, there's a white tube. This is one of our human remains training aids. And we came out earlier today, we took this white tube, we buried it under this dirt here about six inches. And then what Condor did, as he was working the area, dog found a location, he began digging a little bit to identify exactly where that scent is. And then what he did was he sat. That is, is his alert to his handler that I found what I'm supposed to, give me my ball. All these dogs that are out here doing this work, they're doing it because it's fun to them. Uh, they're simply identifying what we've trained them to do. So Condor gets it, Connie uh, alerts and provides him the ball, and that's his reward. If it, it's heavy scent, though. It's amazing. Why, why is it so important to do what it is that they do? Uh, within Search and Rescue, one of the mottos is so others can live. Uh, there's, there's so many families that are in time of crisis, and mm -hmm. it's important to us to be able to provide a service to that family and, and that need. Uh, lo lots of times it's finding the, the person that's alive in the woods, but there's other, other that goes to recovery that's also just as important mm -hmm. to help the family come up with closure. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here today and everybody for joining us. It was so nice to meet all of you. And if you'd like to learn more about the Midwest Search Dogs, just visit their website at MidwestSearchDogs.org.